Okay, in this video, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the two different switching system options on the new SPS pedals. One's the SPS system, which is where the name for this whole series came from, uh, which is great for certain things and has some quirks for some others, so we'll go through that. Um, the advantage to this system, which you're seeing behind me right now, is that I have a bunch of pre-soldered, like they already have the parts on them, they already soldered in um, uh, boards that you can just buy and I'll be basically selling them at cost because I just don't have uh, use for them. Okay, and I have, uh, I don't know, 500 more of them. I've got quite a few. Okay, um, And then this is the true soft bypass system, which was basically adapted from the standard series to the SBS series. Um, and there are a few differences. Um, the advantage to this one is that you can build it by hand. There are some surface mount um, ICs but they're, they're not impossible to do by hand by any stretch. Whereas if you tried to do this by hand, the everything surface mount, including incredibly tiny diodes and transistors, uh, yeah. Mm. I had to do it by hand just to prototype it, and I do not want to do that ever again. Okay, <laughs> It's very difficult. Um, so there you go. So I'm going to go through the differences between these two, and let's just start here with what the primary uh, thing is, is that, hey, they need to help switch the effect on and off. So this right here is the microcontroller. And basically, if you look at both systems, you're going to see a very similar connection here. So we've got uh, 5 volt power coming into the microcontroller. We've got a resistor that's going to the foot switch. That's a momentary foot switch that just goes from, connects to here on the other side's ground. So when you ground that pin for a moment, it triggers this circuit. Um, it's also you know, you can do the tap, tap, hold for three seconds and then watch the LED flash. And that's now you're in momentary mode. So now you press and uh, hold and the effect is on and then you let go, it turns off. And you can get out of the mode the same way. Press, press, hold for three seconds. Okay. Um, this actually doesn't register that sequence unless there's been a pause in any presses for three seconds. Just FYI. Anyway, so that's the foot switch pin. This here is the high pin, meaning that when the effect is on, this goes up to 5 volts. And that one right there is the low pin, which means when the effect is on, it goes down to 0 volts. And then when the effect is off, that's 5 volts, that's 0 volts. Okay, Okay. so when the effect's on, it hits the high voltage, hits this transistor, which turns it on, which this is the relay coil, which switches the relay um, and turns it on. Okay, And so that's how the relay is switched on. Uh, and the thing that you'll notice right here is a little pin uh, that both is to go that goes to the LED pin as we'll see later but basically it turns on the LED on the audio effect board but also because I've put this resistor in here you can work it in reverse meaning that if you want to send 5 volts to here from the other board um, you can do so and that's intentional go see the yodeler ravine springboard blueprint all the ones where I have true bypass trails and you'll see that in action where we're forcing a voltage to keep the relay on to let the echo decay naturally and then letting go of it. So um, that's why it's built that way. But because of that, this right here, which is a 220 ohm resistor, um, can experience times where it has a full 5 volt across it. Uh, and so doing the little voltage squared over resistance, 25 divided by 220, um, is... Uh, actually, it's right around an eighth of a watt, a little bit less probably. So you, you could use an eighth of a watt, but I, I typically use something higher than that um, just for good measure, just to have a little buffer room. But but you, you should be fine with eighth of a watt. Okay, so that's the switching controller here. You're going to notice um, it's you know laid out a little bit different, but it's basically the exact same thing here. Right? Controller, foot switch, resistor. The MOSFET, turn on the relay. That's the part that's like identical in both of them. Uh, this is also a non-latching relay, which means that if power is lost to the pedal and you're in true bypass mode, um, it'll automatically switch to true bypass and the signal will pass through. If you're in buffered mode, it's still going through the circuit, so if there's no power, the circuit won't be um, you know, passing any signal. Okay, now down for the where the audio actually goes through. So. Here we have our input jack and our output jack. I think I got that right. 
Now it, you're, I'm making myself double double guess. It might be the reverse. Um, wait, this is the to the pedal. So yeah, okay, I got that right. <laughs> So this can be a little bit convoluted. First, these uh, switches right here, this one and that one, that's the relay switch. The relay switch is a double pull, double throw, and they're linked together, okay? And then this right here is the buffer switch. Um, so the, the basic idea is that um, this turns the effect on and off, but this switch will change where the output comes from, okay? It changes where the output comes from. So if I switch it down, uh, this is going to the output jack when it's turned off. So when I switch it to this position, it's coming from the input, so that's true bypass. But when I switch it to this top it position, that's the buffer pin. So it's now being fed by whatever buffer output you have on the audio effect board. Okay, over here we have some drop-down resistors, um, uh, which are keeping those pins uh, you know, connected to ground so there's no stray-like charges built up so when you switch it on and off it doesn't pop or click um, and so there you go on also part of the uh, um, buffer there's there's actually two parts to the buffer switch this part is just uh, about um, when you turn the buffer on you want you want always to have the signal to go to the circuit you want it to always connect because you can't just draw signal from nowhere so this you have to send signal to the circuit to get signal out of it, right? So this, this part just lets it toggle when you put it in buffered mode. It sends your input straight to the circuit permanently. Okay, all right, hopefully that all made some sense. All right, and then you'll see it says battery here. I, I put that, I don't recommend it because of the um, non-latching relays. They draw quite a bit of juice while the pedal's on, but it's an option. Um, you would, uh, there's a little battery part on both boards and this little pin right here uh, is so that the battery, if you unplug the cables, gets disconnected. And if you plug them in, it connects the ground on the battery. And that's by using the, uh, you got tip ring sleeve. So the ring uh, is where that gr the negative of the battery gets connected to. And if you put in a mono cable, which connects the ring and the sleeve together, that'll connect that to ground and turn the battery on. Um, so there you go. Okay, same section in the true soft bypass, and you'll notice that this part's all the same. That part's all the same, but there's this other thing over here, and this is where the name true soft bypass came in. So basically, uh, the uh, true soft bypass was a design that I had created to try to uh, smooth out the mechanical switching of a relay switch, just to give it a little bit, you know, less click noise. You know, anything mechanical has got a little bit of click. And so this is just a, a soft JFIT switch. This JFIT is acting as a switch, um, and it's si getting its signal. Um, let me go back here. It's either from the yeah, it's getting its signal from the. That's why I thought the low pin. Because with the JFIT, if you don't give it a signal, it's on, and if you give it a signal that it crosses a certain threshold, it turns off. So it works in reverse there. So um, anyway. But it's coming through this resistor, that signal's coming through this resistor, that diode, this capacitor, and that whole network is just all about making that on-off transition of that JFET smooth. So you've got the smoothness of this, here's where the output uh, is coming from the audio, and then it's going to all this circuit over here. Um, so that when you turn the pedal on, uh, the there's a little bit of a slow slowness, slowness by Mil measured in milliseconds on how fast that turns on um, and that just smooths out the, the switching click just a little bit. It's not going to be a miracle cure and make all pops go away but it will help smooth it out. Okay. Alright so that's the difference between those two and now the big difference between the two is the power system. This power system is massive. This is the SPS system so first the part that's the same is that we've got a reverse protection diode, it only lets voltage go one way. We've got a Zener over voltage protection diode. Um, that's 20 volts in the SPS system, in the TrueSaf bypass system. It can be 20 volts unless you're using the charge pump, in which case you need to use a 16 volt or lower because the maximum rated on that charge pump is 16 volts. You got a uh, decoupling capacitor to filter 
um, you know, noise, that kind of stuff. Then you've got a five volt regulator. This is for the switching circuit and all that. Okay. And then down here, here's the charge pump section. And this isn't actually a charge pump, it's a DC converter. And <laughs> to try the there's parts of this that I don't fully understand, uh, but the basic gist of it is that um, you've, you're, you're having voltage being uh, a, a pulse wave voltage where it's up for a certain time and down for a certain amount of time. And you can adjust how long it's up versus how long it's down via this trim pot. And the more it spins up, the higher the voltage to this network that is uh, charging up a, a, a capacitor, the higher the voltage output that you'll uh, get there. But in order for me to have both positive and negative, this is an inductor-based DC converter, so that's an inductor right there. In order to have both, I had to essentially induce the opposite voltage across that's on this inductor across another inductor and then do essentially the opposite circuitry as far as like letting voltage pass one way and not the other. So we've got the positive rail, I believe is on uh, this side. Yeah, oh, the positive rail is the side that's induced and here we've got the negative uh, right there, okay. Uh, these little circuits here, there's two of them. They've got a little MOSFET. They're actually one transistor package uh, together. Um, and they're a uh, capacitive multiplier, the goal being to reduce some output ripple. Um, it's not a magic bullet. Uh, in fact, this is the one part of the circuit I feel I wish I could redesign and, and try to improve. Um, but it does as effectively make the capacitance of that um, capacitor higher, which can reduce output ripple. Okay, and then we've got the voltage trim pot. Now, here's one of the quirks about the SBS system is that I know I, when I started testing, I noticed that at certain voltage settings, it could get quite noisy. And um, it's my first experimentation with a inductor-based DC converter. Um, so I was surprised by that. But if, you, if you're patient with it and you really work it, you can find a voltage spot that gives plenty of clean headroom that is quite quiet on basically all the pedals. The only pedal that I was not able to do that with was the Fiery Red Horse. So I just didn't connect, the, didn't make it feed from this at all. So if you're using the Fiery Red Horse, all you got to do is remove the chip. It's the 34063 um, controller chip for DC conversion. Uh, you can remove it. Uh, you can also remove it for the Alpha Dog because the Alpha Dog just doesn't need it at all. It's not about s whether it was compatible. It just, it's a type of circuit didn't need it. Um, and, and so on. Um, so there you go. The circuits that definitely need it, definitely need this to work properly. Well, the one that definitely needs it to work properly is Coral Reef, because that gives it lots of voltage and headroom, and clean headroom. Okay, without it, you're not going to have mu much headroom for the bucket brigade chip. It'll still work, just won't be as clean. Another one that uh, can get an advantage from that is the old school, for the same reason. You can feed it, well you can use the true soft bypass, which will just feed it whatever voltage you fed in. Um, on the positive rail, but uh, it won't get as much clean headroom as you will using the true soft bypass. Now, if you had a 15 volt power supply, if you had a 15 volt power supply, um, then go ahead and use the true soft bypass because that 15 volts is a is um, higher voltage for the old school in the coral reef on the positive rail. Okay. Um, and then the mini mu was the other one. Having a little bit more voltage gives the optocoupler was tuned for a higher range. Now all three of those ones will work with the true soft bypass. Um, you just might have some, some of those quirks, you know, let reduced headroom, have to tune it just a little bit different, those kind of things. So just FYI, those are the three pedals where I kind of go. Oh, I recommend this circuit, um, and uh, they're the ones I s that I say don't use this circuit at all. <laughs> or remove the charge pump or the alpha dog and the fire head horse. Then all the others, you can use it or use, it, use the true soft bypass. I'm gonna go to the true soft bypass here. Uh, this is the, it's power system. Um, it's got a, a bit essentially a lot of the same things here. Now the big difference, there's two, two kind of differences. I got an inductor to kind of help filter out some like supersonic radio frequencies and sort of stuff, stuff like that. Um, it's not super necessary, but improves the filtering on the power. And then this is a 
voltage inverter charge pump. So whatever voltage you give it, it creates a negative version of that. So you give it 9 volts, it gives it negative 9 volts. You give it 12 volts, negative 12 volts. And that allows me to send that positive and negative power rail to those circuits, which gives a lot more headroom and a lot more flexibility in design, makes it actually more ideal, especially when it comes to like signal bleed from one part of the circuit to another. Um, the challenge with this is that the um, charge pump frequency runs at like 335 kilohertz, which you can't hear, but if it's, if you uh, put it with a coral reef, oh, that's right, you can't do it with a coral reef at all. The coral reef has to be the other one. You'll hear an audio whine because the oscillator in the coral reef gets close to 35 kilohertz, that's particularly at certain settings. And so that uh, uh, interaction between 35 kilohertz and you know 38 kilohertz well that's a three kilohertz difference you're gonna hear that as a audible whine um, and so that's what's called heterodyning that's one of the sort of problems with charge pump pedals that sometimes happens doesn't happen very often but sometimes can happen um, and so the SBS system the frequency that that one runs at is like 160 kilohertz and I had no problems with the core reef on that or or the things that this interacted uh, weird with, which is a very short list. Um, I think there was like one, yeah, it's a really short list. I'm trying to even like stretch my brain. I think there was some Strymon pedal that charge ones have a problem with, and this didn't have as much of one, but there were certain settings that it still, you know, anyway. Um, the, other, the bottom line is the SPS system has a higher frequency that uh, didn't even mess with that. Okay, I think that's, all the differences between them. I'm just going to uh, note here. Uh, here is what's officially the top side of the board, but it's actually the bottom when you install it. So you can see this is the SVS system, all surface mount components. Here's the TrueSoft bypass system. You've still got a, a surface mount relay switch, so you should install the surface mount part first before doing all the through hole. And most of the parts live on this side in the uh, TrueSoft bypass. Um, and then this is the SBS system. There's the back, tons of surface mount parts. Okay, and then um, on the back, well I should say it's, it's the back, but it's the top when you install it. This is the side that you'll see. Uh, this is I need a it's mirror imaged here, <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, and then uh, here is the true soft bypass. On this one, the back side only has three surface mount parts. That's it. There's no through hole parts on this side. Okay, and that's the MCU controller, the charge pump if the circuit needs it, which most of them will. And this is the 5 volt regulator, which I put pin 1 on there. Kind of flipped there, but there's pin 1 to help you know which pin switch. Okay. Um, and so there you go. And then they both have the same pin connections. Uh, and yeah, uh, let me know if I got something wrong or missed out on something. If you've got a question. Uh, hopefully this helps you decide which one is which. Again, the SPS system you can buy from me pre-assembled. Um, uh, and the true side bypass system you can build yourself. Um, okay, hopefully that helps. Uh, I'm always learning. So if you can figure out uh, how to wait a way to make that SPS system like quiet at all voltage settings, let me know. I'd love to hear that. All right, thanks.